Hello maths fans! Welcome to the third question from Tom Rocks Maths and I Love Mathematics. Thank you for watching, thank you for everyone for sending me your questions, thank you for voting. The winning question this week is what would be the Earth's gravitational field if it was hollow? So this is a little bit of a trickier question than the other ones that I've looked at, but I'm going to do my best to explain it as simply as possible. The first thing we need to do is to define what our hollow Earth looks like and what it's made from. So there are a few things you can do here. We could say, imagine the Earth has the same mass but happens to be hollow. So the sort of bit remaining, the shell would be really, really dense and really heavy. Or we could just take out the centre bit and then have the density distribution the same as it currently is on the Earth. Or we could just have a constant density throughout. So now let's define the setup. We have our hollow earth here, so like a donut shape. So this is the shell which has mass and in the middle it's hollow, there's no mass. And the way I've defined this is such that the inner ring has radius A and then the outer ring has radius B. And so what that means is when you look at the distribution of density in our earth, when the radius is less than or equal to A, so inside the hollow bit, the density is zero. When we move between the radius of A and the radius B, so inside the shell where there is like Earth, there is mass, the density is given by this function, which I'll come to in a minute. And then for the radius greater than B, so outside of our Earth, the density is also zero. And in the bit in the middle, what I've done here is create a linear function of the radius. So when the radius is A, your density is rho naught, which is just some generic value, some base value, times A over B, where A is less than B, so it's less than rho naught. And when you move right further out, that gradually increases as R increases from A towards B. And when you get to B, you reach the exact density rho naught. Now that we know the density distribution of our hollow Earth, we just need to use a fancy physics law to get the gravitational field. And the one we need is Gauss's flux law. So this is a general physical law and it relates the density distribution of a planet or of an object or a body to the gravitational field of that body. So how the mass of the object relates to its, its gravitational force depending on how far and around and where you are in relation to the object. And Gauss's flux law is very, very general, but rather than writing down the general form, I'm just going to write down the particular form that we need because it simplifies a lot when you have two particular conditions. The first condition is that your object is a sphere. So the Earth is a sphere and our hollow Earth is also a sphere, so that's okay. The second condition is that your object has spherical symmetry. So what this means is that the only variable that matters is the radius, so the angle doesn't matter. And this is also true for Earth. If you think about it in terms of gravity, if you're stood, say, here, in the UK. Gravity is the same as if you're stood on the opposite side of the world in Australia. Like the gravitational force is the same provided you're at the same distance, same radius from the Earth's centre. The angle doesn't matter and so that means it has spherical symmetry. Under these assumptions Gauss's flux law just becomes this very nice simple expression. And this says that your gravitational field at a distance capital R is just equal to minus the universal gravitational constant G times the mass inside the radius capital R, which we will need to calculate, divided by the radius squared. And this is true for all distances from the centre R, provided that you are not actually on the centre itself. So for Newton's universal law of gravitation, you would have to take the limit as your r naught tended to zero. So you'd have to shrink in onto that central point and that would recover Newton's law of gravity. 
the universal constant of gravity, this g, which was discovered by Newton, is it's always the same, it's just a constant value, and it equals 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11. So it's tiny, it's just a really, really small number, but it always, it's always there and it always pops up when you're doing calculations involving gravity. You'll notice that we divide by the radius squared, or divide by the distance squared, and this is the classic sort of gravitational theory where gravity decreases according to the distance squared. The most important thing about Gauss's flux law in this particular form is that our gravitational field only depends on the mass. And so we have to consider three different cases. First case, for the radius less than or equal to A, so we're inside the planet, there's no mass inside us. We can draw any ring, any radius R from the centre, as long as we're inside A, and there's never any mass inside of us. So MR here is simply just zero. For the second case, where we are now inside the shell, this is a bit trickier because we do now have mass. And as we move further out, the mass will increase and therefore the gravitational field will change because it depends on the mass. So if the mass changes, the field must also change. And so we need to work out the mass that's contained within a disk of radius capital R, where R lies between A and B. And to do this, to work out the mass of something, what you do is you integrate the density function. So we know the distribution of density, and in particular we know it inside the shell, so between A and B. So we just have to integrate this function between A and our radius, capital R. So I've now done the integral of the density function where we're integrating between the inner radius A and our radius, capital R, which has to be less than B. And I've gone through the steps here. I won't bore you with the details. It's quite technical, but it's relatively straightforward if you understand integration and spherical polar coordinates. But the key point is, you get this answer here, which is pi base density rho naught divided by b times r to the fourth minus a to the fourth. And that is the gravitational field at a distance, capital R, from the centre of our hollow Earth, where R lies inside the shell. And the last part is also relatively simple because we've worked out the middle one. Because all that it depends on is the total mass that's inside where you're standing. So if we're standing at a distance, capital R, which is now greater than or equal to B, so we're out here somewhere, the mass is just simply the entire mass of the whole planet. That's what this MR will be. And we know what the mass is anywhere inside the shell. So that means we do know what the mass is when we get to the edge of the shell, which is the whole planet. So we simply just replace the capital R in our equation for the middle bit with B, because that's, that's the furthest extent of our planet. That's where the mass stops. And that gives us our final solution here in our third area. Now that we know the gravitational field in the three different areas, so we know it inside the hollow part of the planet, we know what it is inside the shell of the planet, and we know what it is outside, we just put all three pieces together to get the full gravitational field. So at any distance, from the center of our hollow planet, the gravitational field is given and well defined by this function. I hope that's answered the question. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Tom Rocks Maths, and check out my website, tomrocksmaths.com. And of course, please keep sending your questions in and please keep voting. Until next time, goodbye.